Hey, this is AJ bringing you a uh, another video here. Uh, this time I want to talk about virtualization technologies. Now, virtualization technology allows a user to run concurrent OSs. Basically, uh, they can run one operating system or more for more than another. A user running Mac OS X with virtualization can run Windows XP without ever leaving his Mac installation and this is done through the use of virtual machines I'm going to show you what a virtual machine looks like right here I've got Backtrack 4 Final in this folder this is its virtual machine folder in here it has some virtual disk files which I'm highlighting right here which is basically a hard uh, a virtual hard drive split up between 16 different files now VMware is one way to use virtualization there's several others. There's VirtualBox, which is GNU GPL licensed as open source. There's Virtual PC for Microsoft, it's proprietary. And then VMware or VMware Workstation, which is what I'm going to be using for my demonstration. Now, VMware Workstation takes a virtual disk and can either store it in one large file or multiple smaller files. Since this is a 30 gigabyte drive, I've chosen to split it up between you know, multiple files. Now in here, and in any VMware virtual uh, folder, you're going to find a VMX file, which is your configuration. I'm going to open it in Notepad, and you can see here all the parameters. It's got my USB settings in here. It's got my sound card, my floppy, which I don't have a floppy, but if I had, it would show up as being able to be configured in here. And if you need to, you can always come in here and tinker around. See right here, Ethernet connection zero, connection type is NAT. You can set that to bridge, host only, you know, whatever you need to do. It's even got MEM size right here. I can set the amount of RAM. Now this computer here, it runs four gigs of RAM. And I've got it set to only use 768 for the virtual machine, which allows a little over three left for the host system. And that's a little bit of terminology here. The main operating system, which right here I'm using Vista, is called my host system. It's the actual real installed operating system. Now I'm fixing to double click this VMX file and it's going to open up VMware Workstation. And here it tells me a little about the machine. And I hit power on. And this powers on the guest machine. The guest machine is not the one that's actually fully installed to the hard drive it's the one that's installed to a virtual drive on the hard disk now the neat thing about VMware is this all runs in RAM but this is actually you know stores it uses persistent changes which means if I open the operating system create a folder and save a file and then exit when I log back in it's all still gonna be there now just to touch on a few things on this is booting here. VMware, well, not just VMware, any virtualization technology has several uses for servers. First off, it can allow you to run multiple operating systems. If your server is a Linux system, but you need to use Active Directory and a domain controller, you can install Windows 2000 Server on the Linux system and run it just like you would if it were really a Windows machine through VMware without actually having to get rid of your Linux. So if you wanted to run Apache, but you wanted to use some features of a domain controller, you know, you could set up a system through VMware to do just that. Of course, you can also use Apache on Windows. I'm just giving an example there. If you had some other stuff that you wanted to use a Linux, for example. Now right here, it says honeypots. Uh, a honeypot, if you don't know, is a decoy system set up in the demilitarized zone of a inf network's infrastructure that is set up specifically to foil an attack. I'm going to go ahead and log in here, by the way. It's designed to be a decoy against network attacks. So if a hacker tries to penetrate your system, hopefully they will see the honeypot and attack it. A honeypot's usually a system that mimics an actual server, looks, feels, smells like a real server, but contains several vulnerabilities. And you might say, why would you want to put that on there? Well, if a hacker comes in and he's looking to do some damage, hopefully he'll come across the honeypot and he'll say, oh, here's a vulnerable system, let me exploit this. And all the while he's doing this, 
your intrusion detection slash intrusion prevention system and firewall picks up on his activity, notifies the network administrator, and then he everything he does is logged and he can be detected, tracked down, and hopefully prosecuted. Now the third thing is virtual private servers. Hosting companies usually have three options to get a website. You can have a dedicated host, which means you rent out your completely owned machine. You have your own hardware, software, IP address just for your site. That is ridiculously expensive though, so a lot of companies can't afford that. Now a shared host is a second option, which is you don't have your own IP address, you don't have your own hardware, your website and many others websites are on one system. You have limited access to the file system, you have limited resources to do yada yada. It's the cheapest, most economical. Now the, th the third option is that, that I just mentioned, private virtual servers. Private virtual servers use VMware or another virtualization technology to rent hosting space to clients that appears to be their own server. Now in reality it is one machine with a bunch of VM uh, virtualization systems running on it but to a user it appears that they get they do get their own IP address but it appears that they get their own you know file system their own logins and it's the best middle ground between shared hosting and true dedicated hosting for development virtualization can do several things it can give you multiple environments if I write a program for Vista but I want to test it in Linux for instance a Java or a Perl or Python program I can fire up my Linux distribution, put in my USB key, and run it on Linux to see if it's, you know, how good the cross-platform uh, aspects of the application are. It's also good for testing network applications. If I write a client and a server, I can fire up the client that I wrote in Linux, fire up the server here in Windows, and I can connect them and make them communicate with each other. And as I'm doing that, I can debug and revise and change my program and it really really helps if you don't have multiple systems to test on you can set up an entire virtual network just to play around with using VMware. The third thing is malware analysis. Uh, malware researchers can use VMware or a virtualization technology to run malware. What I'm at saying is Let's pretend this isn't Linux. Let's pretend this is Windows XP. I can download a virus or a Trojan and run it without worrying about compromising the security of this system right here, my real actual host system. And the reason is all this right here runs in VM, it runs in virtual memory and RAM. And what is stored to the hard drive is stored in a compressed format that only VMware can understand. So in theory, nothing running inside here can cross over into my real host operating system. The exception to that though is if you copy a file from here to the host system, you can compromise security. So that's never a good idea to do if you are suspicious that there's some kind of malware activity going on. And the second thing is, in the case of a worm, if you have a worm on this virtual system and it starts to scan your real network looking for vulnerable hosts if it finds one it can propagate itself to other machines in the network so if you're going to do malware testing and analysis you need to make sure that all your virus signatures are updated all vendor patches are updated and that everything's secure first and it may even be a good idea to disconnect all live systems from the uh, thing and it's probably best just to do that in a lab environment where any systems that might get compromised are of real, no real value. But real quick before I end the video I was just going to show you here I by default Backtrack starts in silent mode where it's not connected to the network so right now I'm connecting the network interface with this script that I wrote. I'm going to open up Firefox and you notice I've made this full screen. Uh, the windows didn't disappear I just you know throw it up there for the moment. I can even make that little tab right there go away. Now I'm online. I can go to these websites like Soma FM. 
I can listen to this internet radio. I've got access to all my backtrack applications. And I'll show you one other feature uh, real briefly. Is called Unity Mode. Now, you might be thinking, what's Unity Mode? Unity Mode allows... Turn the volume up there just to show you that it works. Unity Mode will allow me to run both these operating systems not just at the same time, but with the appearance that I'm only running one. This is kind of actually I don't think I can do Unity Mode right now because I can't I haven't changed the screen resolution. But if you were to go up here, uh, you could select Unity Mode, and it would basically take me to a screen that looked just like my Windows, but I would have an extra uh, menu down here at the bottom that said Backtrack, and I could click on it and it would bring me up a menu that looks just like this menu right here in the applications and it would allow me to run both of them side by side but anyways that's just a quick overview of the virtualization technologies hopefully I'll bring you a video here soon of how to install a virtual machine and some more little tidbits